Hey guys, Level Cap and Luton here with an episode of On the Level, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about Gunmaster and the new patch update that's potentially going to allow you to choose the order in which guns are unlocked in Gunmaster. So the server uh, admin should be able to set that up. Do you think that this is going to revitalize Gunmaster, potentially make it a lot more fun? Um, yeah, I think it could do. It can be quite irritating at the moment when you get stuck on one gun right at the end, and this actually funnily happened to me this week. I was, I was cursing, seriously. It was so annoying. Um, I, was, I was well ahead of everyone else. I was a good sort of four um, guns ahead of everyone else, and I got to the sniper, and I thought, oh, you know, sniper can be quite an irritating one. I got two almost in a row, and I was flying, flying, and then I got stuck on that damn grenade launcher. And um, I couldn't get a kill with it. I couldn't get a bloody kill with it. I was on uh, Zebra Tower. It's a nightmare. For, I was on Zebra Tower for Christ's sake. You think you get a kill? I was shooting down the end of this corridor, and I got like six hit markers in a row. I was like, ah. And then whilst the, what happens? Someone knifed me, and I was like, oh my <laughs> god. Went back to the sniper rifle, and then by then everyone had caught up. So yeah, I, I think it needs some tweaking. It's it's true, and. I've always been kind of annoyed that it's, it's team anyway. I don't quite understand why it's team on Gunmaster. I, I think it should just be like a free-for-all. But mm -hmm. anyway, um, I, I think it would. I mean, does it allow you to actually pick the guns, or is it just that you change the order? Um, I think you can pick the guns. So you can s potentially suggest anything in theory. What I think would be neat is uh, if they let you pick stuff like even C4. Uh, mm. If you really wanted to troll, like make the last kill an EOD bot or something like yeah. that. Um, you can just imagine everyone be... on the team just driving around with EOD bots at the end trying to get the kill. <laughs> yeah, and think about what you could do now. You know how they have pistol-only servers? Well, make a pistol-only gunmaster. There's enough yeah. pistols to do that so you could get all the way to the top where, I don't know, they give you the worst pistol. I don't know what the worst pistol is. They're all, they're all pretty decent, but it'd still be kind of a cool way to, like, say, here's an actual legitimate form of a pistol-only server where we don't have to have some sort of server... Uh, admin or bot something yeah. that like boots people every time they use anything that's not a pistol um, i think if they make it if they make it so that you can literally choose anything you want and you can put it in whatever order you want i think that will definitely revitalize it if it's just reordering it then it's kind of good but not super exciting either way though it's good that they're actually trying to make some change to it so yeah yeah i'm, I'm kind of all for it really yeah you could do uh we're still like brainstorming about it. You could do like uh, frag round only shotguns. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that something. would be hilarious. Just something yeah, yeah. Mind numbing. Well, you could just have all, like all the different sniper rifles. You could do any single class. You could have oh, all yeah, sniper, sniper rifles. Only. Yeah, exactly. You just have that all the way through. Or all right. So yeah, it sounds pretty cool. In fact, I might implement maybe a round of custom gun master once the uh, the new patch comes out. So for the other topic that we wanted to talk about today is uh, we both have some interesting ideas for maybe some new pieces of equipment that you could roll around on the battlefield. Luton, what's one of your ideas? Okay, despite the fact that I know you've already slated this idea, I'm still, <laughs> still going to go forward. Um, uh, I've seen it mentioned quite a few times, so it's not like my idea and it's not a special idea, but the idea of coloured smoke grenades. Now, Level has pointed out a massive flaw in this, which he will explain in a minute, which I have to say <laughs> I do agree with. However, I still think that it could be a usable thing. Originally, the way I'd thought of coloured smoke is perhaps you... For, for one thing, you would have a hand-thrown smoke grenade, okay? So that is a good thing to have, just normal smoke, and you can carry it as a smoke grenade. Um, the other thing that would be good is then you would have maybe two other colours, like green and red, something like that. And my original idea was that the green ones could be used for designating landing zones or, you know, maybe there's a clear route or something or a direction you want people to go in or something like that. Um, Level will explain why that sucks. Um, however, I still, <laughs> I still think that the other idea of the red smoke is a good idea. So maybe you just would have white and red, okay? And the idea with the red is that you would use it to designate to uh, vehicles, perhaps helicopters, jets, and tanks. Um, if you're infantry on the ground, even if you've got a mic, sometimes other people aren't paying attention, they're not listening, and, you know, other than marking a target, you have no way of really telling people that it's something to shoot at. Sometimes there could be another reason why you want to destroy a building. Perhaps there's people camped in there, you can't actually mark them or something, and you want to take it out. So by throwing some red smoke down, it would designate to helicopters, tanks, and other things that, hey, this is a building, and we want you to take it out. 
I guess the only issue as well is, you know, how do you differentiate between the two teams as well? You know, if you've both got red smoke and, you know, you don't know which is friendly and which is not. Yeah. So perhaps you would have it as US team always has a certain coloured smoke, the other team always has a certain coloured smoke. So you could look at it that way as well. But do you think there's any real use for this uh, or do you think it's just literally a, a crappy thing? I think, um, you know, it's interesting when you put it that way and I think about maybe a Caspian border game or something where somebody's inside a building at a gas station and you're a class that can't really deal with the building and you mm. know that you've got armor and jets around you and you can't really communicate to them that there's a guy in there to shoot it in. Maybe you designate it and they blow the heck out of it but on the other hand you also have probably a lot of um, newbies or just trolls or just people who aren't really taking the game seriously chucking red smoke all over the place yeah. uh, or missing their target you know I mean what if you throw their grenade and it bounces off the sign in front of you which yeah. happens all the time and then all of a sudden you got all these jets and people coordinating on a point that means nothing you yeah know? so uh, it's a cool concept I think ultimately it would just end up being misused or used in a trolling fashion or yeah. very rarely actually used to the effect at which in your mind would yeah. be awesome yeah, where it would yeah. coordinate people. I think that's fair to say, definitely. All right, what's one of yours then? So um, there's this cool thing that I saw on this uh, TV show. I forgot. It's like modern weapons or something like that and yeah. they were uh, going over they call it the sword which is some terrible acronym that i can't remember what it stands for but uh it's a unmanned ground vehicle it basically looks like a beefed up eod bot with um sturdier tank treads that really look like they can go over some serious terrain uh but it has a um machine gun on it i think it's like a a saw or something like an M249 is mounted on there mm -hmm. and you can control it remotely so my idea would be that perhaps the engineer class could have this uh, sword unmanned ground vehicle and you could potentially put it up at the front lines in like a rush game while you camp back towards the MCOM that way if the enemy perhaps sneaks past the front lines you can then abandon your sword and all of a sudden you're really close to the MCOM you can defend it better um, or vice versa in rush rounds where um, you're just tired of burning through your tickets clashing against the enemy lines the engineer could potentially push up uh, this EOD bot with a 50 cal on it or the uh, the machine gun on it now it would have to be worse than actually just running around with a gun you shouldn't have the same kind of mobility or maneuverability but it would still be kind of interesting just because uh, I see the EOD bot being used so rarely nowadays and it'd be kind of nice to have something uh, a cool remote device for the engineer that could perhaps uh, deal some damage. I'll tell you what I think as well I, could, I was thinking about this, and originally I just thought, God, it's it's you know it's the MAV from um, Bad Company Two back in gr <laughs> in ground format. But then I was thinking, you know, like you say, if it if it's not as good as running around with a gun, so it's slow, it doesn't have the ability to kind of speed up like the the EOD right now and just fly through the map. Um, so make it kind of slow, so you can imagine it kind of tracked, just chuggering along like da 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 da, -da. And um, what I'm thinking of is kind of infantry-based maps, perhaps that aren't that big. Or think about this, if you're an engineer, it would give you the ability to kind of control multiple positions uh, mm -hmm. by yourself. Maybe as well it has like a range, so you can't kind of drive all over the map from somewhere, you know, 200 you know a mile away um, yeah you know it has like a localized radius where you can't go out of otherwise you kind of lose range and it just kind of powers down you have to go back in range to kind of actually be able to control it or something like that um, but what I'm thinking of is let's say um, I'm just gonna use Metro as an example because it's, it's easy to imagine two positions you know um, but mm -hmm. think think of any base where you're trying you know maybe you've got two routes into the base and you, you, you maybe you're there on your own and you've got to try and keep it locked down whilst other people are doing things um, you could position your little uh, your little robot somewhere covering one route and then you could cover the other route and then as soon as you saw a marker or perhaps you heard someone in in the distance over there you think okay they're coming from the right rather than having to run over there and leave the other area unattended you could quickly just tab into the robot um, see if someone there mark it or go back you could switch between the two and it would just perhaps allow you to manage different positions very easily you know you could flick between the two or perhaps even you know maybe uh, you could go as far as um, you know instead of like with the um, 
with the EOD where you actually have to go into it, perhaps this one, you have more of a kind of little heads up device where you can kind of control it, you, you know, maybe press a button to go into those controls, but you don't actually kind of go into full screen mode so you can see what you're seeing and what oh, it sees see at the what same time. Seeing. Yeah, exactly. So that you don't have to kind of leave yourself as a kind of, um, I always hate it that if you're in an EOD or an MAV or something like that, you get totally taken out of the game and it leaves you as this kind of a, a dead avatar somewhere on the map <laughs> and you kind of you know you're you're prone to someone knifing or shooting you or whatever yeah there could be a grenade on your head and you wouldn't know <laughs> yeah exactly so I, I like the idea of it being more of a heads up device um similar to the um just as an example uh, you know the camera in uh it's in cod isn't it black ops you stick the camera down it gives you like a little heads up so you can yeah. see stuff I imagine it to be kind of like that, so that you, but but it has a gun on it, and you can actually control it and drive it around at the same time. So that's that's how I see it. I think it would actually be kind of good. Um, I'm interested. How how do you see it in terms of armor? Like how hard is this thing going to be to take down? It would probably be pretty darn easy to destroy. Similar to an EOD bot, I would imagine maybe like doubled the EOD bot's health, which is still relatively nothing. So if you fire um, a few bursts at it, it's going to go down just with a gun. Yeah, yeah, and I, I before people scream like copycat and stuff. I know this was this has been done in games before, and uh, I actually like the effect that it's had. And it's also kind of I was thinking like how you're talking about blocking off two pathways yeah. as one person. You could also use it in like conquest where you cap a flag, put one of these guys up on the rooftop of a building overlooking the flag. Then run along to the next flag. If you see this one burning, switch back and uh, waste the guy capping the flag. Or <laughs> That's gonna be so overpowered. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah I totally agree. Yeah, it, it's a it kind of cool fun. idea. It could be extremely annoying too. Yeah. I don't know. It, we're just spitballing ideas. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I'm gonna go up with my next one. Um, so this thing is this is a real life device. I was I was reading up some things and it's called SWATS and that stands for um, Shoulder Worn Acoustic Targeting System. And um, it's basically used in places like Afghanistan, where soldiers are kind of out in, you know, they, they've got a lot of positions open to them where they can be fired upon. Um, but it's very difficult to kind of quickly identify where they may be taking fire. And what this thing does, um, it detects basically the shockwave from a gun blast, and then it can identify the origin of that shooter in less than a second. Um, it provides then, you know, an audio signal to the troops that they're being fired upon, and it also gives them a readout and reference to the location. Um, so how do I see this working in game? Well, I would suggest that if you were to become suppressed from enemy fire, so you haven't actually taken any damage, this device would auto mark the firing enemy for you for a few seconds, uh, maybe just two seconds or something like that. But obviously this is only going to happen if you're fired upon yourself, so not your whole squad, just you. So if you're equipped with it, it will mark it. Um, and it wouldn't function if you're in vehicles, obviously, because you're protected from the vehicle, so it's not like it's a passive thing that's working all the time. If you're on the ground and you get suppressed, this thing is going to mark it. And obviously if they're in close range, you're probably going to see them anyway. The kind of situation I see this is things like things like Karg Island, Oman, and Caspian, as we've kind of been talking about already. Um, when you get sniper fire or you know machine gun fire from somewhere at a, at a kind of good range and you quickly need to identify where that is coming from or perhaps you, a couple of your team have been killed by some you know hiding guy with a, with a suppressor multiple times this would be able to kind of pick them up what, what do you think about this idea how would uh, how would it actually be okay well it, de it depends like who it's given to like what classes and whatnot but uh, I think it's potentially a little bit overpowered and at the same time uh, doesn't really provide that much more intel than people already popping on the minimap when they fire a gun. Yeah. So you can basically figure out what their location is already from the minimap. This would just essentially give you a 3D spotting position of where they are. Uh, it would have to be for the soldier, the only the local soldier that's using this equipment that would see that because your whole team all of a sudden gets 3d spotting yeah uh, imagine operation metro you're pushing up one person on the whole team has this device and everybody around you shooting is being 3d spotted constantly like uh it would just be way too it would be wall hacks for everybody i, I wasn't really imagining it as kind of close quarters medium range stuff that's not really what i was designing it in, that's not what i was thinking um it was more for like i say often if you're on a map like Karg or something, suddenly you, you're running along and you get psh, 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 you get suppressed and you've got no idea where the hell it's coming from. It could be you know any number of like 15, 20 different locations um, and you can have a quick look around but if they stop firing you've got no idea where this is coming from um, and you want to be able to identify it. 
and and that's really the kind of situation it would be designed for. Um, I think it would be too complicated to try and put any kind of you know distance relation in in there. You know, like say, okay, they have to be a certain distance for it to work. I don't think that's too complicated. It wouldn't yeah, work. Yeah, and that would make it almost like people would be like, well, do I want this or do I want an RPG? You know, yeah. like. Most exactly. people just take the RPG, but uh, um, I, I think if you're an infantry, if you're maybe it, maybe it's a sniper device or maybe it's an assault device. I don't know, but it have to be a kind of infantry-based device. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I say, I, I think it would have a specific role to play, and that's really what a gadget, uh, you know, an extra piece of kit should do. It should fulfil a specific role, and people could decide whether it was, you know, not to have or, or to have. Uh, you know, um, I think yeah. you know it, it would work on specific maps. If you're on a map which has a lot of long-range engagements, that's the kind of map it's going to work. You wouldn't bother taking it on. I think that's the point. You say, oh yeah, if you had it on Metro, it'd be marking targets all over the place. But you wouldn't need it on Metro because you can see everyone very easily. Very, you know where they are in front of you. Um, and it wouldn't it wouldn't mark them until they started firing and by then you'd be seeing their gun and hearing their gun so you know where they are it's an interesting idea I think it would need a lot of fine tuning and tweaking it defeats the entire point of somebody being stealth uh, and covert you know if they take a shot at you from a long way and you don't see where it came from and this just points them out it kind of takes a little bit of the effort that they put into the game out of it and it takes it takes the skill needed to like analyze and figure out where that shot came from out of the game i'm not saying it's not a realistic or a cool concept but i was gonna uh, say that's I the whole point be more <laughs> detrimental that's the whole point of it is that it's it, you know it provides you with an extra sort of ability of safety and the thing is as well is like regardless of if it marks a target it doesn't mean they're gonna die it just means that you are aware of the, the area that they're you know it's, it's coming from and stuff like that um, True. And and, I, and that's the thing is it's kind of designed as a as a real life safety thing. You know the idea is if if they know where the fire is coming from, they can avoid it, or they can then yeah. start to direct fire to that area and things. I mean the point is is that I don't think it is. I, I don't think it's fair to really compare it to a wall hack. I mean it's nothing like that. It's 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 just simply marking the target. It's not like auto aiming right. for you or anything like that. It's it's not. It's just going to mark that target for a couple of seconds. And to be honest. It's no different than just turning around and randomly spamming the, your, your select button in the rough area where you think it's come from, and then maybe you get lucky and mark the target. All, all it does is it gives you that little extra boost. So Yeah, that's uh, true. Uh, I, know, think, I think given to the recon class um, in exchange for, say, the MAV or the tugs or something, yeah. that would be probably a good fit for it. Yeah. Okay, what's your next one? Okay, so uh, I'm always trying to make the support class better. It's sort of like one of my missions because I really feel like the support class is uh, just so useless in so many situations. Uh, It really doesn't bring enough to the battlefield where it's like, man, I wish I had a machine gun right now. Uh, I never find myself thinking that. So I'm always trying to think of ways to just improve the support class. And I was thinking, okay, well, the support class has got uh, Claymores and C4, which, you know, are sometimes useful, sometimes not that useful. What if uh, you had the option to switch those out for a kind of um, exoskeleton type suit? Now, before we get too futuristic with (laughs) this, um, the F-35 has been in in Battlefield since Battlefield 2 and that plane's not even available yet to use so we've been, Battlefield's been barring future technology for quite a while Um, and the Sarkos exoskeleton and the Berkeley design uh, mechanical legs, those are already being field tested right now and uh, I think it's something that could be more realistically brought into the Battlefield so the way this would affect the support class would be uh, you'd put on this little exoskeleton exoskeleton, and you could wear a little bit heavier body armor, bumping your health up to 125, giving you a slight advantage uh, in some of those situations where you could take one extra bullet than the guy standing next to you. And do you think would this affect your speed? If you've got this kit, I think there needs to be a kind of like a balance to it. I mean, if it's going to affect you a little bit, would it slow you down slightly? Um... I don't know. That's something that would probably have to be tested in game. The whole point of the system in real life is that you're literally supposed to be able to carry a um, hundred or two hundred pounds of equipment and liter- and feel like you're not carrying anything. It's supposed to be as natural as just running around freely. And I've actually seen demonstrations of it. So mm. uh, I would like to say that the support class can still maintain its normal movement speed. This would just be something to make it a little bit better. 
Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I think it's an interesting one. I may as well just mention as well the, the idea that I talked about earlier was that um, there's was, there was another thing called liquid armour, and it's basically a body armour that's liquid, and when you know a round or something hits it, um, the molecules of that liquid will tighten up and become solid, and it prevents the round going through and, and hitting the soldier. The benefit with having liquid armour as opposed to hard armour is obviously it's more flexible. Um, and apparently mm -hmm. this, this stuff is, is harder than Kevlar, so it's very, very you know hard protect you very very well um, but I think this is it kind of it goes in with that you could put them in the same group and I, I think it's always a bit controversial with these things and I know it is because people hate the idea that you can be modified to be protected I think it it conjures up the kind of juggernaut idea for people but I, I never have a real issue with it because I think you know it's something that they put into the game but I think it needs to be counterbalanced okay if you're going to have extra protection that means that you can take an extra one or two rounds it needs to have some kind of negative impact whether or not that's that's a real life thing so yeah for me i think it would need to slow down their movement it would need to mean they can't run they can't maybe they can't turn as quick because people I love think, to be able I to turn i think the fast. counterbalance is the fact that the support class just kind of sucks you know <laughs> that would to me that's why the support class would get this awesome uh perk that would just give it this crazy amount of health because uh, it's got machine guns which are good but honestly when you come up against good players with assault rifles uh, you're just gonna lose that fight every time so like just because the support class only has ammo and machine guns uh, that is the counterbalance they just don't have a lot of tools that are really putting them out there uh, giving them huge advantages in the battlefield that that's true in terms of a straight gunfight but as a I think we've mentioned before, and we did, I think we both discussed this before, was that from my point of view, support class is not designed to be running around going up against assault classes. It's not for that. It's more for getting yourself in pre-setup positions and laying down suppressing fire or laying down fire on a kind of bottlenecked kill zone and stuff like this. It's not designed for the same kind of running around infantry-based combat stuff, even though they've got a big LMG. And I think people, we talked loads about this before, I remember we were talking about classes and the way that battlefield works and you know for that reason I never kind of imagine it as being a disadvantage for taking the support class because I, I take that class to fit a role I take that class to fit a situation so therefore it's like if I want to lock an area down um, you know I'm going to take the support class or if I'm working if I'm working behind my team usually if you're taking a support class the, the, the clue is in the name you're supporting your team players so maybe you would have assault classes with you and you're supporting them um, so that that kind of is where I am with it so that's why I think like yeah it's a great thing to have but for me I think it needs to have something offset because otherwise it's, it's just kind of boosting it too much in my opinion gotcha 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 all right so I think we're gonna wrap things up here and uh, as always we would like to hear what you guys think about our ideas our equipment and especially what order of weapons you would like to see in Gunmaster because that's gonna be a real thing very soon so thanks for listening guys and this is Level Cap and Luton signing off.